Hey guys, it's Jordy here from Cinecam.net and welcome back to another Copycat Friday. In this weekly series, we try to recreate visual effects from famous movies and music videos. But today is a little bit different as we're taking a look at an anime film, and more particular, Demon Slayer. So it's going to be super interesting to translate the anime drawings into a real-life effect. And in more particular, we're going to recreate the talking hands like this one. Timo, th that's not good. Look at the quality. You can do better. Come on. It's a lot of work, Jordi. Okay, that's that's right. It, it is a lot of work. Okay, you know what, guys? Let's take this step by step, do a breakdown, and show you guys how it's done. Let's get started. Grapes. Anyone? Hello? I'm selling grapes. To recreate this effect, there are two main ways to do this. You can either composite, so take a shot of your mouth and your hand and just lay them on top of each other, or you can go full 3D, where you animate a mouth in a 3D space and just paste it on your hand. Both have their pro and cons. We'll be going for the first method since it's the fastest and easiest. And right now, we just have to test out the rotation of the hand and how far you can go before you notice the mouth is actually a flat layer and in which software to create the shockwave and you can blast from its hand. On a certain moment, we want to blast a shockwave out of our hand mouth thingy, and I was looking for some shockwaves on Storyblock. But I was thinking, I want to shoot at an angle, and I can't do that with all these front sided shockwaves. So I decided to make my own. In Cinema 4D, we used the plugin X Particles to create this particle shockwave object, and the best thing about it, I can move around it. So I can use whatever angle I want, and I can place that in my shot with whatever perspective we shot it in. Easy. That was easy. Our shockwave is working perfectly and we have the rough effect of our hand done. So that means we have enough information to start shooting for the final effect. Now hold on Lorenzo, this is Jordi from the future. I'm already working on a shot you're about to take. But I had to come back in time because I'd like to thank Storyblocks, our channel sponsor. Not only for just being there for us to support this channel, making all of these tutorial videos possible, but also for their incredible library filled with millions of video assets, ranging from 4K high quality stock clips all the way to After Effects and Premiere Pro templates. And in between, we can find overlay effects, we can find fun animation, that you can throw onto your edits. There are so much green screen clips, there are transition packs, there are even logo reveals where you can just swap out your logo and get a very cool animation. And if you're missing some shots in your videos, then just look at the high quality stock clips. You can also find collections, so you can find multiple stock clips of the same theme and jar. Now imagine, you've got a client that asks you to make a 3D animation of a car engine. Well, no worries, Storyblocks has that. You're saving time, effort, and money. So within a few clicks, you got yourself an awesome edit and the great thing about Storyblocks is that you can download unlimited video assets for only a single price per year. So go check it out guys by clicking that first link in the description down below. I can highly recommend it. All right, I'm gonna hop back into the future now. Good luck, Lorenzo. Your shots look really good, so you don't have to worry. Emo. Yes? Do you want a great Yes. Catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In two. Hello. You come then. So those are my fiance's uh, grapes. She likes to eat them in the evening, but she didn't know that I took them with me. So tonight she's going to look for the grapes, and uh, she won't find it because these two doofuses are eating them. I healthy. I threw one at Timo. <laughs> We're a professional studio, you know. <laughs> It's time for me to go in my suit. I don't know guys, it feels like I'm rooting for the Brazilian football team or something. Go Brazil! I, I don't do sports. <laughs> Thank you. 
The preparation for the effect is fairly simple. What you do is just paint four dots on your hand and then you shoot it. You make sure that your hand is pretty wide open so that you have plenty of space on your hands and that you hold it fairly still to make it yourself easy. Afterwards, in post-production, we're going to track the movement and place a mount onto it. But that is for later. First, you also need to film a mount. Now, because everyone here has a moustache and a beard, it's going to be super hard to blend that in onto my hand. So that's why I'm going to ask my fiance Kim to come in tomorrow to the studio. Hopefully, she has shaven herself. Kim is here, my fiance, and luckily she doesn't have a moustache nor a beard. That is perfect to blend her skin in together with my hands. Now, super important is that she sits as still as possible. Her head can't move around, so that's why this crazy setup. I even brought some electricity cables, but that is for a later experiment. That's suspicious. Right now, we're going to shoot a close-up of her mouth, and that's basically it. Nothing more to do. But make sure that you are in the same lighting, that way you're going to save yourself some time in post so that you don't have to color correct the two shots together. Work! <laughs> okay, we have the last shot that we needed, so it's time to launch After Effects. First thing we can do is place the clip of our talent and their hand in a composition. And now we are going to do some tracking. Because we are working with Flash, we are going to do a special tracking. So we selected our clip and pressed track motion. Then we placed our tracking points on the tracking marker and hit track forward. After Effects will now do its thing and once done, we can simply create a new null object and use this null as a target for our tracking data and apply it. And now, do this for the other three markers. Next, we are going to add the clip of our mount actor to our composition. The first thing we are going to do is check if the mount is staying in the same place. If not, then we need to stabilize it. But our talent was so still, we didn't need any stabilization. So thank you, Kim. Now we placed Kim's mount on the right spot. You can lower the opacity to help you do this. Then pre-comp the layer, and now let's link Kim's mount with Jordy's hand. We took the Puppet Pin tool in the top menu and made four pins on the mount clip in the same position as our tracking markers. Really the exact same place. Then we linked the Puppet Pin positions with the correct tracking point positions. So the top pin with the top tracking point, and the bottom pin with the bottom tracking point, and so on. Now bada bim bada boom, your mount is linked to your hand. However, the entire clip is linked to your hand, so we of course also masked out the part that we wanted, only the mount. Now to really make everything blend, we feathered the mask a bunch and did some small color corrections to stitch it all together. Looking good! However, we still have these black tracking markers on our hand, so let's remove them. We selected the main talent's clip and a null object with the tracking data from the marker we want to remove. For us, this will be the top one. We made a duplicate of these layers and pre-composed them. Then we went in the pre-compose layer and with the ellipse tool, we created a small round shape just above the tracking marker. Then we linked the shape with the pick whip tool to the null object with the tracking data, making it follow along perfectly. Next, we adjusted the track mat option of the main clip to alpha mat. This will remove everything except for what's underneath our shape. Then we went back to our main composition and here we offsetted our pre-compose layer so it would cover the black tracking marker. And now, if done correctly, our tracking marker is gone. Of course, do these exact same steps for the bottom tracking marker or the left or the right or whatever tracking markers you have. But now let's add some extra details. We selected the main layer and the layers that removed our tracking markers. We pre-composed them all together and on this new pre-composed layer we are going to add a bulge effect. Now within the effects controls we adjusted the settings until we had something we liked. But now we also need the bulge to follow along with our hand. Otherwise we will get these weird random distortions all over your image. So we alt clicked on the stopwatch from the bulge center to link the effect to one of the null objects with the tracking data. 
But if we now link the bulge effect with the pick whip tool to the position of such a null object, the bulge effect will follow along, but will be in the wrong place and we can drag it back to the place that we want. So here's a solution for that. We created a new null object and added two slider effects to that null object. Name one X and one Y. Then we again went to the bulge center stopwatch, but this time we are going to write a custom expression. So let's start with a bracket, then take the pick whip tool and only select the X value of the null object with the tracking data. Then add a plus sign and link the X slider. Next, press comma and now we are linking the Y value of the null object. Then again a plus sign and last, link the Y slider. Now close the brackets. Now your effect is linked but still not in the right place. However, with the sliders we can now position our effect on the spot that we want. And now for the detail that will sell the effect. We want the skin of our hand to move with the movement of the lips. And this is actually quite easy to do. We took all our clips and pre-composed them. Then we are going to do a motion track on the part of the lip that is moving. For us this is the lower lip. Again, we added the tracking data to a null object, then copied that null object and went back into our latest pre-comp and here we pasted the null object. Object. Next we looked for the CC smear effect and added that to our hand clip. Now before we are going to start with linking stuff, first make a duplicate of the null object with the bottom tracking. Then place that duplicate closer to our new null object with the tracking of the lip and then you need to select every position keyframe and you can drag the new null in place in the composition window. Once in place we alt clicked on the from property of the smear effect and parent that to the position value of our duplicate bottom tracking. Then we again clicked on the to property and parent that to our new lip tracking. Last, adjust the reach and the radius to our likings and BOOM! The effect is done. Jordy? What are you doing? And that was it, guys. As always, I have to clean up the studio while the other guys are gone. Thank you so much for watching, by the way. Thank you, Storyblocks, for the support. Go check them out, guys. And by the way, if you enjoy these anime real life effects, we've actually done a few of them. I'll leave a link to a playlist in the description down below. But most importantly, stay creative. But today's a little bit different. But today's a little, whoa, whoa, whoa. But today's a little <clears throat> But today's a little bit different. That's from the stem. But today, but today, yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> 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 <laughs>